Kawere, welcome to Born Extinct, my journey to the acknowledgement of my ancestors and my authentic spiritual self. My name is Atkakwa and I was born extinct. There's much emphasis on economic, political and military changes forced on colonized people, yet food was always a fundamental tool. One cannot properly understand colonization without understanding the relationship with food. Food has never been about the simple act of eating. Colonization fundamentally changed the way of life for African people, their history and identities. Through food, social and cultural imposition, we were conquered and violated. The scorched earth policy of the British, killing livestock, burning crops to subdue natives was an effective way of suppressing rebellion in the Kenyan colony. Once the crown consolidated its power, thousands of Europeans arrived and were given the most fertile land, the White Highlands. They forcibly seized land, displacing indigenous inhabitants. By the 1930s, approximately one-fifth of agricultural land controlled by Europeans. Food choices are complex and are influenced by cultural values and a part of maintenance of social identity. Food is history. It is culturally transmitted. It is identity. Food is power. Despite the destruction of our livelihoods, indigenous people have been able to hold on to indigenous knowledge, language, values, customs, symbolism, spirituality, worldviews, and concepts of development. Through day-to-day -day activities of indigenous people, we can still see how indigenous knowledge have been stored in the collective memory. This knowledge is expressed through storytelling, songs, dance, myths, beliefs, rituals, community laws, animal breeds, and plant species. Indigenous foods contain knowledge from long evolved cultures and patterns of living in local ecosystems. Every natural environment makes knowledge of each people unique and different from others. Indigenous communities rely heavily on land. The land grabs have led to the decline in nutrition. Large scale deforestation for agricultural production limits the nutrients that can be gathered. Indigenous people's right to food is inseparable from their land, territories, resources, culture, and self-determination. The constraints on water availability, high temperatures, droughts, fires, unpredictable weather, changes in sea levels, soil erosion, spread of insect and pest diseases, and changes in wildlife migration, all of these affect indigenous food systems. Indigenous people maintained a sacred relationship between themselves and the environment. Storytelling provides vital lessons across generations about relationships between plants, animals and people and emphasizes the importance of maintaining relationships of respect and reciprocity between humans and their world. The imposition of colonization severed relationships with our ancestral land and forced us into the European body politic, resulting in a loss of knowledge sustained millennia before European disruption. Native American elders historically planned seven years ahead, teaching each generation that they are responsible for the seventh when they were forced to assimilate historical nutrition and food culture was lost. Food and medicines are interwoven and all indigenous cultures use plants and food to prevent disease. African foods are rooted in our lives. Although we can still recognize some indigenous foods, we must acknowledge the legacy of colonization in our diets. 
indigenous food systems such as gathering your own food, taking only what's needed and hunting animals for meat only when necessary is a far superior way of survival. The disruption of traditional lifestyle and the introduction of processed foods, refined fats and oils contribute to the worsening state of health in our communities. South Africa is no exception when it comes to the prevalence of non-communicable diseases caused by the exposure to Western foods, which are more energy dense, processed of animal origin and contain salt, sugars and additional fats. Africans are now affected by diseases previously affecting only the settler. South Africa remained under British, German, French and Dutch rule and influence for centuries. Every European civilization brought their own food cultures and that of the people they enslaved. Animal meats, although not regularly eaten at the Cape, were flesh of buffalo, game, hippopotamus and fish. The koi did not consume dairy, but the milk of ewes were designated only for women and young girls. The pre-colonial diet consisted of cooked grains, fruit and nuts, sorghum or millet, fermented milk, and roasted or stewed meat. Gatsby, Babuti, Bunny Chow, Chakalaka, Kusister, Malva Pudding, Mealtert, Cook Sister, and Mili Mil are not indigenous foods. It came with colonization. The Dutch, with an insatiable appetite for meat, very difficult to get in Europe, imported sheep, dairy, cattle, and pigs. Reminiscent of the koi tradition, we still see grilled and air-dried meats in our braai place in Bolton. When Jan van Ribby constructed his border of wild almonds from the mouth of the Salt River in 1659 through Rondebosch and Kirschenbosch using the Lisbjerg River, cutting the natives off from their food, medicines and grazing, it was an act of extreme psychological violence. The wild almond, a member of the indigenous Protea family and closely related to the Australian macadamia, contains cyanide. It is extremely poisonous unless treated by soaking and roasting. The hedge of the first apartheid wall is still visible in, in the Kirchenbos botanical gardens, physically and metaphorically. The birth of the garden can be traced to 1644 when a storm drove the Dutch ship, the Harlem, ashore. The crew, knowing that it would take very long to be rescued, settled in the Cape where they planted fruits and vegetable seeds to barter with the koi. They were rescued after six months. On their return to Holland, they presented a report and Jan van Riebeek set sail in 1651 with the instructions to invade and grab the best cultivation land and set up a fruit and vegetable garden. He arrived on the 6th of April, 1652. Master gardener Hendrik Boom prepared the first seeds for sowing on the 29th of April, 1653, planting fruits, vegetables, herbs, ornamental shrubs, and he also planted pine and oak trees. The first apple ever planted in the company gardens was a bitter vein apple. The first time the apple was recognized was in 1662. On 17 April, 1662, the first two ripe apples were picked. The first wines were produced from two grape varieties, Stein and Hanapurth. Cape Hanapurth arrived in the Cape in 1654. At the time
time, scurvy was a major problem for sailors arriving at the Cape and Van Ribbeek planted citrus trees to provide them with vitamin C. Citrus fruits became popular in the tropical rainforests of China and were introduced there by Arab traders from the Middle East. Oranges were first introduced to the European colonizer in the 15th century when Vasco da Gama was given a load when he landed in Mombasa. Unprecedented levels of chronic diseases are resulting in calls to revert to the diets of our ancestors. This shift also will restore our relationship with the earth and restore human and environmental health. Chronic diseases such as heart disease, strokes, cancers, diabetes and chronic respiratory diseases Rates of overweight and obesity has risen sharply in the last few decades, Kate, together with underweight and nutritional deficiencies. Currently, more than 45% of men over 35 are overweight and 7% of deaths recorded nationally are related to excess body weight. The decolonized diet, therefore, is the reclaiming of culture consuming foods that our bodies are adapted for and eating foods that's readily available in nature. Restoring indigenous food planting is necessary for healing of colonial trauma and unhealthy attitudes to food, learnt through Western institutionalization of food. Corn, bulbs, seeds, flower shoots were eaten, yet across Africa today, the main vegetables are maize, potatoes, plantain, cassava, peanut, peanuts, pepper, and cucumbers. Most of these vegetables come from Asia, Europe, and the Americas. The top African indigenous vegetable today is cowpea, yam, and okra. South Africa counts its leading crops as potato, tomato, maize, onions, pumpkin, carrots, cabbage, lettuce, and beetroot. There are lessons to be learned from this history. Foods like potatoes and peanuts suffer discrimination. And in the US, peanuts were simply called slave foods. In Khoi and Sun cultures, knowledge of what is edible was handed down from mother to daughter prior to colonization. Suggestions to go back to our roots, it's not just an emotional knee-jerk reaction. Our survival depends on it. That would mean cutting out wheat, beef, dairy, pork, and alien species from our diets. We need to reconnect with our ancestors and indigenous knowledge. Food needs to be a vehicle to taking back our identities. Until next time, Kai Gangangs for your time, Cape of Storms, Table Bay, Falls Bay, Cape of Good Hope, Settler. It was not yours to take. I am Atakwa, and I was born extinct. <laughs>